everyone. It's me again, Kathleen, from the Zenart team. And today we will start, um, well, for on my side, we'll start with our Halloween themed uh, painting. Okay, so um, last week, I think um, Theodora um, made one, I had a live video on which she thinks. Um, so you might want to check that out as well if you're looking for more Halloween themed stuff. But moving forward, um, we will have more Halloween, um, Thanksgiving, um, seasonal content. So if you have any requests, let us know and we might be able to fit it in. Okay, so again, today it's um, the jack-o'-lantern. Um, so pumpkins uh, are generally um, autumn, so whether they're um, just plain old pumpkins or when you carve them up for Halloween. So today it's a carved pumpkin with um, that's lit from within. So it will be fun because um, we'll play with light and shadow contrast. So as always, when there's good contrast, it's it makes everything so much easier and more dramatic in the end. Okay, so hi Don and Joe. Thank you for joining. Okay, so as usual, I'm going to flip things around so that um, you'll see me paint and no more face. And today I'm working small so that um, this will be great for cards if you want to give cards to friends. Okay, so here I've already pre-sketched it and um, I'll show you the reference photo which I shared in the event. Here it is. And when this got, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, it'll be in the um, down below. You'll just see it in the information. So you'll find it, we'll share it there. Okay, so I didn't have a um, line drawing for this. Let me know if you need one, but it's not too hard to draw. And the nice thing about pumpkins is that um, nothing has to be perfect. The pumpkin itself doesn't need to be a perfect circle. The eyes, the nose, the mouth, it, nothing has to be perfect. Everything is organic. When you carve it, it's its not always, uh, you know, straight and uh, proportional. And that's fine. thats That even makes it um, look fun, right? Okay, so here is my pre-drawn, pre-sketched pumpkin. And we'll start painting. Okay, so I will be using colors from the Classico and Modern. So I just have the two. I haven't painted this before, so I'll be <laughs> I'll be figuring things out as I go here. Okay, so for the light, we want something that's bright, and these two colors are very similar. So you can use either your lemon yellow or your Hansa yellow light. You want a bright, cool yellow because you want that um, that that's the first layer, and you want that brightness to shine through. Okay, so you'll start with that. Any uh, any cool yellow that you have will do. Okay, so let's start with our cool yellow. So I'm going to use my hands here because I'm running out of lemon yellow. I tend to use my yellows a lot. So I don't know if you're, you guys are the same, but in my case, I really use a lot of yellow. And it's uh, especially the transparent yellow you end up using more of it because it's quite transparent especially for mixing with other colors okay so what we'll do is um, we'll paint all these um, carved out parts this bright yellow so I'm I'm painting it very saturated not light because I want that pop of yellow so paint it here and don't worry if you go beyond your sketch, that's fine. It will be covered by the orange later. It won't be so obvious. So do you guys celebrate Halloween? Do you love it? <laughs> do you love the spooky, spooky decor? Do you like to decorate your own DIY? It can be fun. I know, Joe, you like it, for sure. <laughs> so you can also, you can totally um, personalize the carvings if you know, if you have your own carving, the 
the technique will be the same the only difference would be the how the carving looks like but you know the lighting and the shadowing and such will be um, quite similar so you can even play around with your own design if you want to I like this one because even the teeth are not the same some are smaller and some are wider and chunkier so that's why I chose this one so just take your time and trace around your sketch there's no need to hurry <laughs> yeah <laughs> is it Halloween so fun I used to go to a, a yearly Halloween party where we dress up and it's really fun uh, it's also fun seeing what other people come as or come in or come as what doesn't have to be a person right sometimes they're just objects it's very fun it's like um, being ch a child again with you know with no judgments okay so it's very yellow and bright and I that's I that's how I want it so actually in the reference photo it's a bit um, paler but in my case I want it to be like shining through okay so next um, I will use my blow dryer to quickly dry this so I can already layer um, the next layers without um, messing this area <laughs> Halloween every day for you, yes, right? <laughs> Halloween should be extra, extra for you, bro. And the reference photo is just plain white background, but I suggest um, you you cr you make it dark so that um, the colors will even um, shine brighter. Okay, next we'll layer um, our orange. Okay, so we'll use our bright orange right here. Uh, very perfect, pearl orange. It's really a nice, uh, it's the perfect orange. Okay, so I will use that and just cover the whole bump. Oh wait, um, I don't think I want to do that first. I will first use Hansa Yellow Medium um, because I want this to be the highlight. Okay, so let's add a yellow of Hansa Yellow Medium just so we can have a highlight before we add the orange. Okay, so let's paint it all over. So this is a warm yellow now. So you'll be using your two kinds of yellow for this one. Okay, so try not to cover the cool yellow that you've applied already. Okay, so when you paint, just try to cover as much area as you can quickly because the areas that you leave midway uh, painted midway will dry with hard edges so if you don't want that to happen don't leave spots too long without continuing so i just go around so that's one of the things that i always um, keep in mind when i'm using watercolor unless i don't want i don't unless i want the hard lines i try not to leave spots half painted for too long you can even use your if you have rough watercolor paper for this um, it will be great for the pumpkin because it's quite textured so if the texture of the paper shows through um, it's just going to add to the effect. So if you haven't yes, yet experimented with rough paper, 
I suggest you do. It's also a very fun experience, especially if you like to experiment with painting loosely. But I only have one because I really tend to use cold pressed um, like 95% of the time. Alright, so we're almost there. Okay, and don't worry because it's going to dry a bit lighter. Okay, so next, ah uh, yes, <laughs> um, my uh, the violin you hear, yes, um, he is um, rehearsing, <laughs> so you will have some background music today <laughs> while I paint <laughs> a, a violin background music. <laughs> So if you like Broadway, you probably know the song from Annie. Okay, so next, um, we'll again, we'll go back to the orange that I mentioned earlier, the pearl orange. So you want a nice, vibrant orange for this. You want your vibrant colors so that it will contrast beautifully with your dark background later on. So your dark background can be anything from dark green, dark blue, brown, or deep black. It's up to you. If you want a deep, deep black, um, you can use watercolor or you can also use black gouache and make it really matte black. Again, play around. You can create um, the same pumpkin so many times and just play around with the, um, the background. Okay, next, let's add our layer of orange. Okay, so what I do is from the top, it's more solid like this and then as I go down I try to see where my lines are and try to do this to sort of trace along the lines the darker lines and then dip my brush in the water lightly and then pull the color towards the other areas so that you have a areas that are um, lighter so that it's like light is hitting them more and it will be because in this area there's light popping out so it also um, affects the area around it okay so don't worry because the lighter areas you can still add to them later you can still layer over them so it's much easier to just slowly layer um, rather than uh, put a too dark layer and have to lift it off. So I always err on the side of what's easier to fix. In my case, it's better to just layer slowly and just add more if needed. But that's me. Uh, I find that it works for me very well. So you can try what works for you, but uh, in my case, this is much, much easier to control. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just pulling the color towards the areas around the light. So you want the areas around the light to be a bit lighter. So remember this is just our second layer and uh, if you join me often you know that I like to layer a lot okay so just be patient and you'll get to where you are okay in this area I'm going to start here and then pull the color upwards and then add, dip my brush in the water and lighten it. If you're basing it on the reference photo, 
this area is lighter because again the light is spreading outwards okay. this area is a bit deeper in color because it's a smaller cut so light does go out but not as big as here so you just need to keep those things in mind if you take a look at your reference um, you'll understand why some sections are a bit lighter and darker if you um, observe where the light is this area is also a bit darker so you have another source of light on the outside coming from here so this part is slightly slightly um, brighter So if you can actually be even more dramatic and have an even brighter looking pumpkin and just a very deep dark orange and a very dark background if you want. So many beautiful pumpkins that you can copy. Okay, so now it's a bit easier. Just one straight application oops okay that's right i thought i was painting over the mouth so what halloweeny things do you guys want us to feature next time do you want a halloween like view like a haunted house or something like that or a haunted forest okay so i've actually gone past the line but i'm not worried now because the background will be darker so i know that i'll be able to easily cover that shape the excess painting okay so now you have um, two layers you have your orange and now we can add an even deeper orange to add the lines but first I will dry it so I can layer it uh, wet and dry yeah right I was thinking about that earlier but I went for this so next time let's do this spooky house or forest because it also looks awesome and it's not necessarily orange color it can be you know more misty um, really um, spooky So before I forget, okay, I'm just, I think, using one brush today. I think it's enough. Not, not too many um, intense details for me to switch around. Okay, so now I'm going to mix um, my orange and my red and create a red-orange for the deeper shadowing and the lines that I want to establish. Okay, so just a red-orange mixture. And just find the lines that you want to make deeper. And what I like to do is I don't always paint one straight line. I break it lightly here and there that way you can have lines that are not so stark so try to vary the depth of how you press your 
um, brush and not all the lines will be deep lines some of the lines across the pumpkin are shallower so they will be lighter so just have the two kinds and you'll be good so first now I'm going for the darker lines and then I will add the shallower ones after okay I think there's another one here so I'm just going to add it myself and there's another one here so for this one you don't need to go hyper realistic this can be more illustrative okay so now I'm going to okay this one is lighter so let me just switch to a smaller brush so I don't mess it up okay so number five number three or number five brush depending on the brushes that you have okay. just so I can create thinner lines And I'll lightly go over it with a wet brush to even lighten it further because I want to have the deeper lines and the lighter lines. Down here you can make it a bit darker because this will be in, more, in shadow. So you need to add this so that your pumpkin doesn't look flat. Okay, and now I want to add a bit of texture. So I will go from the, the darker lines, the deeper ones, and then add a layer of the same color and just spread it outwards so it also helps give your pumpkin um, its form so same color layer it over here and then spread it on both sides But you have to do this while it's still wet, otherwise you're just layering and creating a thicker line over the thinner line that you created, which you don't want. You want your original line to be visible. If you find that you've um, disturbed your original line so much, um, just wait for this layer that you did to dry and then add another line on top again after. Okay, so we're giving our pumpkin dimension. That's why we're doing this. painted over the yellow oops so just lift it out as soon as you can so 
So don't be afraid to make mistakes here. Um, you can totally correct things easily and it won't be obvious because, again, this is such an organic shape, organically cut. So everything is very forgiving. Okay, so if you make a mistake, don't freak out. Just try to fix things and you know it really won't be very obvious. So as you can see, I'm not concentrating on making things looking smooth because you don't want it smooth, you want it textured. Like how a pumpkin is very textured. Okay, so that's why we started with the yellow earlier, so that um, even here um, you have that lighter area which will be your highlight. So I'm just looking at the areas that I want to be thicker and deeper and adding there. So you you can easily see it in the reference photo, so just use that as your guide. But don't be too attached to it. You don't have to follow it exactly, just have it there as a guide so you're not wondering what to do next. So here I can already start to make things to bring back the deeper lines that I want. Especially right here, this is quite deep. If it's too light, just add more red. And you can go through these areas with a rough stroke just to add texture. The more textured it is, the better. So you can also use a um, dryish brush technique. Okay, and then you also have. Um, the part here where it's where you cut the pumpkin open so you need to add that so we'll use our red and orange mix and then we'll add but we'll add our green to it to make it deeper So I'm doing this so that I use the same colors that I use here to create my brown. So it's going to harmonize with everything. Okay, so that's one way to make sure that the colors that you use will be harmonious. Try to use the colors that you already have used. Okay, so don't make this too thick. And you can always add another layer to darken it later. Okay, meanwhile, I'll leave it as it is. And I'll create my green. Okay, so I'm using... I want the muted green, so I'm using the green from here. Uh, which is... What is this? Oh, this is from another set, sorry. <laughs> this is a green from Vista. This is a permanent green light. Okay, so permanent green light. Um, I'm going to mix a bit of my orange and red. Okay, so I have a, a muted green, which is perfect for the stock. So let's add the first layer. Okay. 
So you can also use thalo green if you have that. Thalo green with your red and orange and you will get this nice perfect green for the stock. So if you haven't yet, you should also make your own chart, color mixing chart of uh, creating greens, mixing your greens. Play around with your different yellows and blues and see what greens you can get out of them. And experiment mixing it with your different reds as well. Okay, so that's the first layer. Uh, let's wait for it to dry. And we can also use our blow dryer. Okay, so let's mix a darker green. So let's use our red and green to create the darker green perfect okay so this is my my way of just creating darker colors just using the opposite of it the opposite from the color wheel so if you want to darken your green just add some red and vice versa okay so i'm starting dark here and then as i go up it becomes lighter So the stock is ridged, so you want to show the texture. So I just add the lines like so, and I just go over it with a wet brush and soften. So very like shortcut way of adding the texture. Any hard texture that you add, you can immediately soften by going over it with a wet brush. Okay, so you also want to um, add the texture of this. I find it very beautiful. And I really like to work to add the texture that I see. Okay. This one is a bit light, so I'm going to have to darken it. Okay, so you don't need to have all the colors in the world. You can definitely mix the colors that you need as long as you have the basics. So don't go out and buy all the colors ever. Especially yellow. Some yellows just tend to look very the same with each other. And you'll just end up not using them all. Though with watercolor, um, it does, you know, they can stay on forever. They don't really spoil easily. Okay, so we have our stock. Now we need to add 
the area where it's been carved. Okay, so this is a bright yellow. So we'll use our, oops, we'll use our yellow ochre to make a, a deeper yellow, but not too deep. So yellow ochre is perfect because it's not too... Wait, that's not yellow ochre. Okay, yellow ochre. Right here. But I will mix it with my... The, this yellow, with the Hansa yellow. So it's not suddenly just, you know, showing up there. Suddenly there's a weird yellow ochre. Okay, so Hansa yellow. And then add yellow ochre just to create a, a more muted sort of yellow and use that to paint over Okay, there you go. Because of course the pumpkin is not thin, right? It has a thick body and that's the part where you carved and you, it should be there so it looks three-dimensional. Okay, so let's do that for all these parts. Okay, so remember mix your yellow ochre with the yellow that you use to paint the inside. And some parts actually have lighter areas, so you can also follow that right here. So I'm applying less of the mixture. And here, there's also some, so I'm going to lift a bit of the paint out, just a little bit so it's much easier with yellow a lot of the yellows are very um, non-staining so they're quite easy to lift out so doing effects with yellow is actually a breeze because you can easily lift them off so for example sunshine and you want the streaks of sunlight you can just lift the yellow easily out so here too, you have the darker yellow, but then you also have um, the bright yellow that's probably bouncing from here to there. And we'll do the same here, depending on what we see, based on the reference. So it's the same, there's some sort of lighter area here. And if you find that um, it's too light, you can again go over it later with another layer of this yellow ochre, Hansa yellow mixture. So here there's a lot of light bouncing going on. So probably there isn't just one candle inside. So that's why um, the light is also not just from one source. So you have light um, bouncing here and there. And then I'm just softening it here. And there you go. So suddenly, because you add these shadows, it um, even helps the, the bright yellow to pop through. So you want that. And in my case, I really made the, the inner yellow very bright and very saturated. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll add the background, which would be dark in my case. I want it to be really dark. 
So you can have it matte, you can use gouache, or you can just use um, your black if you have, or paints gray. Uh, again, depending on the colors that you have, um, use whatever you have. In my case, I have paints gray here. I'm going to start with this, and then I can always add um, another layer later. What I'll do is, I don't want it to be just a flat background, so I'll use paint gray with um, blue. Okay, that's my usual thing. And I'll use a bigger brush so I won't have um, a hard time filling the area. Okay, so paint gray. And I'm going to prepare a lot. just so I won't um, run out midway. And it's also nice to add blue because uh, blue is the opposite of orange, so it's just going to help um, bring your work together, make it look harmonious. Okay, so it's hard, hard to judge with dark colors um, if it's dark enough. So I suggest you also swatch it out uh, so you can try out um, how dark it is, you can see. Okay, so now let me add my blue. I'm going to use, hmm, let me see, phthalo blue. Okay. So it's like a midnight black background. Okay, so I'm just going to apply it really thickly all around. So it depends on your case what kind of background you want to do. In my case, I just want to keep it like this, simple. And again, I'm going to make sure I'm going to fade it here upwards. Okay, so as usual, if you want a border, then you should tape it before you paint. I totally forgot to do that with mine. But anyway, if you find it easier to do this with a flat brush, then go ahead. Okay, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to bring it to the corners and then fade it just by adding water to my brush really and I don't mind if it's textured because again I'm not really aiming for a flat background I love texture personally so but it depends on your style what you want to do And you can just layer and layer to make it darker. Or you can stop at one layer. So if you want a really deep background, you need you probably need to do at least two layers. So that's really how it is with watercolor, because it's transparent. For, to do your really deep backgrounds, you need to do more than one layer.
So if you've prepared enough mixture, then you won't have such a hard time. Okay, so I chose to use Stalo Blue with the paints gray because this is such a bright orange, so I also want a bright blue to complement it. All right, so there you go. You have your really deep background, which really made the pumpkin come out of the paper. So that's uh, what happens. And the blue contrasts perfectly with the orange. Okay, so you don't have to do a just a black background. Um, you can have a very, very deep background. You can have green, you can have blue, you can have um, even a deep red or deep brown. So play around with it. It really depends on what look you're trying to achieve, but it can be very, very easy. So if you weren't able to start it, um, there's a replay always, so you can just watch the replay. But this is my pumpkin, and you can create several in a row. Um, basically, very, very easy to do and very fun. So just have all your um, warm and cool yellows and oranges and reds ready, and your blues and paints gray or black or whatever darker colors you have you can also mix them from scratch if you don't have them okay so i hope um yeah, i hope you were able to see how i made it and i hope you try this out it's very easy you don't have to do it um, very realistically because um, this can be totally um, just a fun more illustrative exercise okay and here it is it's still wet but here it is okay so do try it out and have fun again with the colors especially the background you can totally have more fun with the background you can add other details if you want you want um, cobweb and such uh, that's actually a good idea you can just um, use masking fluid or you can add it later using white gouache okay so thank you for joining me guys as always and um, next week let's do the spooky house or spooky forest one um spooky forest themed halloween themed again next week so that you know you have enough time to paint them for halloween okay so see you again then and have the uh, a good day bye